Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do some sign replacement. We're using the 3D camera tracker and we're building the new sign in After Effects. Now this is a pretty easy technique and the camera tracker usually does most of the work, but there's some little tips and tricks that, to make a better track. So let's get started. Here I have the piece of footage I'm going to track. It's only about four seconds long. And so now I just click on it and I go over to my tracker window, which is over here. Now, if you don't have the tracker window open, you come up to the window up top in the menu, come down to tracker. I'll just turn it off and you turn it on and it opens up your window. Now it may not be in the same spot as this one, but that's okay. So I'm gonna just click on track camera and then analyze. Now this, you can see here, it's going through the frames and it's analyzing. So it's analyzing the movement of the video and it's gonna create a 3D camera in After Effects that mimics the movement of my camera that I use to record this. I didn't actually have a very good um, slider system or something like that at the time, so it's a little bit shaky. Um, we'll see how this camera tracker ends up doing. And I think it's going to do pretty good. So here it is. So after you're done, it's going to put all these little marks here. And as I hover over, you can see these big targets. So I can come in here and bring that target size down if it's kind of getting in the way a little bit. Maybe make the track points bigger. And so as I scrub through this, you can see there's all sorts of points. Now, the main movement I want, I'm going to be tracking these points. And so if you've got lots of track points that aren't good, so as I move through here, you, I can see I've got some track points kind of appearing and disappearing right here because there's a reflection, and it's actually tracking what's behind the camera from the reflecting off of the sign. And so that's not going to be a very accurate track. Um, also in here, um, he's moving a little bit, and so that's going to interfere with the track. And so if I can delete those points, it's going to be a better track. And so to do that, it's really simple. I'm just going to go to the beginning, click and drag around the points I want to delete, make sure they're highlighted yellow, and hit delete. And then let's move forward a little bit, and there's a few more that has popped up. I'm gonna highlight them, delete. And I'm just gonna go through this until I've got all these ones just up on this upper sign deleted. Make sure they are yellow, because if you if they're not yellow, you might end up deleting the entire 3D camera tracker plugin. Okay, so I went through and I deleted all those points. Let's make sure none of more are popping up. Looking pretty good. Now I'm not gonna worry about these points in here, because there's I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. So after this point, I, what I need to do is click on the, the layer, make sure my camera tracker is active, and I'm gonna come down here and hit Create Camera. And it's gonna create a 3D camera. And now I can see this, there's a camera here. If I go into the custom view, zoom out, I can see there's the path of my camera. It's pretty interesting. right there. So it tracked it pretty well. And you can see the camera moving like that, right along there. And not only is it doing the position of the camera, but also where the camera is pointing. It's a pretty smart plugin. So let's go back to Active Camera. Now before I move any forward, I need to create the new sign. So I'm just gonna do this with shape layers and text, and then a stock image that I found. So let's first bring in this piece of stock image and you can use whatever you want. So this is just the one I found, something real simple. I could have created it here in After Effects as well, but I wanted to be just quick with this. So I'm going to come in and mask out the outer black rectangle. Then I'm gonna to come to Effect, Keying, and do the Extract key. Just gonna get rid of all the white. And then I'm going to add a tint and tint it all white. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now what I wanna do is I wanna type in no food or drink. So no food or drink. 
just about like that. I'm going to bring that up, line those up. If I select both of them, then I can come over to this align panel. And again, if it's not open, you can just open it up here in the window. And I'm going to align both of them together so they're perfectly you know, lined up straight vertically. Now, I'm going to take both of these, pre-compose it, so Command-Shift-C if you're on a Mac, or Control-Shift-C you if you're on Windows. I'm going to call this um, White Letters Sign. And the reason why I'm doing that is so it makes it easy I can switch out the words um, later on in the future. And I should come in here and get this a little bit more centered. Okay. Now, I need to create the background to the sign. If we looked at the original one, it was kind of this grayish uh, background. So that's easy enough to make with just a shape layer. So create a shape layer. Let's go in. I'm going to pick just a neutral gray because then I'm going to color correct it afterwards. And then I can take both of these line it up. Now I, I should actually make sure that these are lined up in the center. And to do that, I went into this uh, composition that I had created, the white letter sign. And if I want these perfectly centered, I highlight both. I go to align to instead of selection to composition. I click that and it's going to align it perfectly into the center. Now let's go back in here and I can align these pull both up together. and I want to align them to selection. Okay, so now I've got kind of a basic sign. I can come in here, maybe bring this down a little bit. And what I want to do is now start to make this look more like a sign. It's looking very flat right now. So this white letter sign, if I go to the layers and then layer styles and then to bevel and emboss. Now if I look at my scene, I've got lights up from the upper right because I can see some shadows down in the bottom left. So I'm going to want this bevel and emboss to reflect that. So let me come down to the settings. If I first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to down because I want it to look like it's you know in beveled in to this sign and now I need to change the angle. So I'm going to move this. You can kind of see that and if I exaggerate the size you're going to be able to see it a lot better. So I want it like this where the shadows are on this side, like the shadows are on the same place in the real environment. And then let's make that size lower, soften that up a tiny bit, maybe even bring this down lower. Let's try four, and that's looking pretty good. So that's the basis of my sign. Now before I do anything else, I do need to pre-compose this again. So I'm going to select the shape layer, and the white letter sign, Command Shift C, will pre-compose this. I'm going to call this sign. Click OK. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to chop off the top because I don't want to have it curved on top. I want it to be straight. So that's easy enough to do with just a mask. So I'm going to bring up my rectangle mask. And see how I just chop off the top there. OK. So now let's add this to the camera tracker. Because if I right now, if I turn this 3D, it's not going to work. It's going to be completely in the wrong spot. So if I go back to my original footage, click on the camera tracker, I've got all these points here. Make sure you're on the selection tool, which is just the main arrow, or if you hit V on the keyboard. And as I hover over them, it's going to do some things. So this is a point. If I hover over just one point, I can right click, I can create a text, solid or a null. But if I hover over multiple points, you see it's creating kind of a triangle between three, and that's going to create an accurate plane, um, which is going to be level with these three points, which is what I want. So I'm going to right click there, and I'm going to create a null object, and it's going to create a null right there. And I can see it down here. Now what I do, if I select the null and hit P on the keyboard, it brings up my position, and I do the same thing on the sign, and they're both 3D. So if I take this position, copy it, and paste it onto the sign, then that sign should be in the right spot. And it's looking pretty good. 
So now I just need to take the sign and scale it up. Move just in the X and Y axis. Don't move in Z because that's going to change things. And then I need to rotate around the Z position. And let's put it right there. And let's take a look at this. And that's looking like it's tracked in pretty good. All right, now let's do a little bit just to kind of make this fit in here a little better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, first I'm going to add a drop shadow to this sign. So let's go down to the layer styles. Let's add a drop shadow. And you can see it's already starting to look a bit better. Let's change the angle so it's on the same side as the as everything else. Let me make the size a little bigger and the opacity down just a tad. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this because up here I have kind of the shadow from this clip up here and I want that to show on top. I know this is really not how a sign like this would be thrown in here but it works for what I'm doing. So I'm going to duplicate this sign and then I'm going to go into that top sign. Let's give it a new name. Sign top. I'm going to delete the layer style because I don't need the drop shadow on it. And let's get that mask. So if I take that mask that I've already have applied, I'm going to just take the bottom of it. So in order to move a mask, if you have the mask selected and you try to move it, it's going to move it all in one go. But if you click off and then grab, you can move the mask like this. And I want to move it just so it's right there in line with that shadow, maybe a little bit down. Now let's take this top sign, go to Effect, Color Correction, Exposure, and let's bring down the exposure. Maybe even add a little bit of a feather to this mask, but not too much. Maybe bring that exposure down a little bit more. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now the last couple of things I want to do is add a light so that this is not a flat color and I want to add a little bit of grain to the sign. So let's start by taking these two signs and so I don't have to add grain to both of them. I'm going to take them both pre-compose, give it a good name and then what I need to do is since it's now not in the right place is this button right here, this collapse transformation button. Uh, there's a little sun kind of a burst. If I click that it's going to make everything right again. Now I can take this, let's go to Effect, Noise and Grain, add some grain, and I just want something very light, um, just so it doesn't look so perfect compared to the footage. So let's come into the color, I usually like monochromatic, and let's bring the intensity down, and the size down. It's definitely looking more like the actual footage. So we can come to this preview, make sure it's on final output. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I need to add a light to this. So I'll go to Layer, New, Light. And I want it to be a spotlight. Let's click OK. And you can see it did a little bit. And you can see there's kind of... I move this light around. And what I want is I want it to be just slightly darker on the left side. So I'm going to bring that in about like that just so it doesn't look as flat as a brand new, you know, something created in After Effects. Now the next thing is to, let's take this, let's do a little bit of color correction, because if I turn this off, you can see that white is definitely not white. So I'm just going to grab the, go to color correction, and just the curves tool, and let's take a look at this. It's a little bit more yellow, a little bit more orange. So let's first go to the red add a little bit of red and then the blue add a little bit of yellow so take away some of the blue and then maybe in the RGB let's bring down just the white values just a little bit okay that's looking like it meshes in there a little bit better now as we go through this 
I'm going to turn off this signs just so it'll render faster. There's going to be a point in which the focus changes from here. See, now it's starting to get blurry to there. And what I want to do is I want to then blur the sign at the same time. So about right here, you can see it's starting to get a little bit blurry. So let's move back to where it's crisp. Right here, I'm going to take the signs, the layer right here, and I'm going to go to a blur. And I'm just going to use a fast blur. Keyframe the blurriness. Let's go to the end. And let's match it. Let's try about 10. That's a little bit much. 8. Now let's try 7. And so now as I preview through this, it's going to change from being in focus to blurring out. Let's take a look at this and fully rendered. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. And so the last thing, since there is a little bit of movement, make sure you have make sure you have your motion blur turned on. And uh, that's it. So that is replacing with a sign. Now the things that I hopefully you uh, picked up from this tutorial is one with the camera tracker you can delete points and it's gonna create a better camera track. And two, if you do things like pre-compose, so I can come in here since I pre-compose that, I can come in right here where it says no food and drink to say yes, food and drink. Come back into the original and it's, it's in here. I can come in here and change out the sign and things like that. So if you're making you know, more than one sign, that's an easy way to do that. Um, the other things is adding little tiny touches to make it blend into the environment better, such as drop shadows, um, a light to add a little bit of a gradient to it, and things like that. And also, make sure you add some grain, because your footage that you have is going to have some grain. The elements you create in After Effects are not going to have some grain. In order to make a mesh better, you're going to want to do that. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out my channel. I put out new tutorials every week. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.